going to introduce our speaker who has been waiting patiently in the wings, looking like some sort of movie star, uh, Elizabeth Quintanilla. I'm not sure if that's the way you pronounce your name, but we'll, uh, if it's not, let me know. She describes herself as a marketing gunslinger. Get that R-rated uh, speaker thing going. Motivational speaker and a humorist. She's done stand-up, everybody, and she's done, no, stand-up. She's done improvisation. She's done improv. So uh, ask her a question and, and we'll see how quick she is to, on the fly, give you a cogent answer. She enjoys giving people belly laughs and making people believe in themselves. Yay, we need both of those. And she's going to be talking about tips and tricks of leveraging LinkedIn. Uh, she is a positive, as you can tell, creative, people-oriented, performance-driven, marketing gunslinger. As a respected consultant and speaker, she is focused on helping business owners understand customer perspective, demand generation, and go-to-market strategies for both traditional and online marketing. And don't forget, looking for a job, you are all in sales. You are all in sales. No matter what you think your job is, you're all in sales and marketing your product is a huge part of that. And she is gonna tell you the tricks of the trade. Uh, she also provides solutions around product marketing and content marketing. She is gifted with teaching complex concepts in understandable terms and delivering high quality creative solutions to ensure product and customer success. Let's give a warm welcome to Elizabeth Quintanilla. Hi, everybody. And uh, it took me about probably 10 years to come up with that whole list of bio. I actually should have kept my Otter AI in here so that I could have transcribed the way you said it because you, re you, you rearranged it. And I love the way you rearranged it. So just to give everybody a sense of hope in this room, um, I was here as one of the as an alumni in 2009. So where you're sitting at, I was there listening to speakers share on different things. And the lessons I've learned since then is there are people who go for a lot of um, W-2s. And what I ended up finding out along the way is that I'm a serial 1099 person. So I've actually have a startup currently that I'm providing services for that's in the top five finalists for the future of work, as well as supporting other companies alongside because, you know, it's one thing um, to just always say it's like there's a there's a way to be fragile where you always know where your come your check is coming from every two weeks, but anti fragile means that you have more than one way of supplying an income to yourself. And so I look at myself as an anti fragile. So I'm very impressed. There's a fellow writer in in this group here. I am very happy for you, and I believe that everybody here should learn how to express um, themselves and whatever feels authentic to them when you're selling yourself, because she's right. You yourself are the product, whether you're applying for an executive admin job or a director of sales, or even as an engineer, you have to be able to instill that sense of confidence for the person who is going to be hiring you, whether it's for a two-week gig or hopefully a two to five-year horizon with a with a great company, it doesn't matter. You still have to have that inner confidence. So this is a, a presentation was originally designed for the students at Concordia. And one of the things that I realized when I'm supporting the, snap, um, the startup, what I'm having, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. In 2009, it was really freaking hard. <laughs> so what did I do with my spare time? I volunteered everywhere. And that little event called South by Southwest, guess who was a stage manager at Emo's in exchange for a badge so that I could go networking? I did not have a job in 2009. I still got myself a gold badge, or actually I think I got a platinum badge because I was a stage manager. But that allowed me access to every single room for a badge holder and there's a little service called $49 and it RSVP'd you to all of those event brights. I'm not sure it's an it's active now, but I figure I'll just go ahead and share my whole screen. What they were saying about South by Southwest. This is my calendar for the next few days. So here you go on Saturday. Just, okay. I just want to bring this. 
so that people So be able to get a hillside pharmacy notion. And then there's the Midwest and the Germany where it's even more. A, a lot of these are actually saved a couple of times, but for instance, it's free. And KMFA is having a, a classical day party if you're into classical music. So you never know where your next gig can come from. But I will recommend building out your network, even if it's volunteering. And what I've realized now is that because of all that volunteering, I never have to worry about referrals. Everybody will always know who, you know, who I am. And they also know what you stand for, because when you volunteer with a group or an organization, they see the quality of your volunteerism. And that's actually a work reference. It's not easy to be a stage manager for South by Southwest, but I was able to get people to stand off as in background. In fact, I was the scariest bouncer they ever had, according to Emos that year. I don't know why. I'm, I am five foot ten, but I still don't know how I ended up being the scariest one. So the good thing, and what really why I wanted to reinforce those things before I started my presentation. So um, you're able to interrupt me at any point. You're able to put any presentations, uh, questions in the chat. If I don't see your question right away, I'm sure that uh, Shannon or Kathy will bring will interrupt and make sure that I answer your question. So social typing. Um, you are, your network is as good as the people that know you. And so there's a common saying in marketing, it's called know, like, and trust. Ironically, it's sometimes your loosest ties that have met you once or twice that you've made a great impression on that can refer you into an interview. So it's actually very important that you connect with these people and, and make sure that you show up on LinkedIn. Because when you connect with them, you, um, you're there as a connection for life. Because most people are not trimming the fat on their LinkedIn networks. Let's just put it this way. There's not a limitation like Facebook has at 5,000. And you never know where one person is a one year ago. And in 10 years, for, 10 years from now, we're going to see MA getting the Academy Award for Best Screenwriter. It can happen. <laughs> so she'll like to, when she goes and accepts her award, she'd like to thank the Academy and also Launchpad Job Club. <laughs> so social tightening. When you connect with someone, everybody knows at least 200 other people, generally speaking. And in LinkedIn, you're rewarded once you have 500. So everybody um, has time, time to make themselves look awesome. This is an older uh, screenshot, so it's uh, the dashboard might have changed a little bit, but you can see how many people view your profile on a regular basis and you don't need sales navigator for this but if you do you can see everybody who viewed your profile if you write articles you'll get to see how well written um, and how many views or people of the articles that's actually one way people are showing up more especially as a writer Um, they have a career advice, and then you can also let, you know, if you make yourself available for recruiters, aka me as a contractor consultant, I actually keep, you know, keep this on because some of my best gigs in 1099s actually came from recruiters. They need some short-term fills in the organization just for this, that, or the other, and I can come in and step in. So it's important to know all the recruiters because they know a lot more people. Not everybody stays a recruiter, but they know a lot of people. Okay, you can, everybody here should know Tom Singer, at least all the leadership. <laughs> and the good thing is Tom Singer has been one of my mentors for a long time. So I am sure he was not gonna mind me using him in the presentation. But when you look at a great profile, we have both different ways of looking at the same thing. One, we both choose a great photo. I love the compliment, I look like a movie star. I just decided to take my glasses off and put my contacts on. <laughs> so, um, but 
you want to look warm and friendly. And so making sure you have your best asset forward. I still have all my teeth. <laughs> Make sure you smile. When you smile, there's invoking friendliness, warmth. Tom Singer is a talented and far more talented speaker than I'll ever be at the moment. And so I'm just going, hmm, he's going to show what he loves to do best as his profile photo. But more importantly, it's also what he stands for. He's currently the CEO of the Austin Technology Council, but what is it that the Technology Council really does? I'm sure not everybody here is in tech, but they bring people together and facilitate connections. He's making sure in his headline photo, he shows what he does. For me, I do the same thing, but it, I'm different. I provide a service. I like marketing strategy and helping them with the planning. And so I say, this is my photo. Oh, and I drink way too much coffee. So, and making sure you have a custom URL that's easy to find. Believe it or not, there are a lot more Elizabeth Quintanillas and apparently there's a Miss El Salvador with my name. <laughs> I'm glad I'm in good company. Let's, there. You know, and then there's various settings we can talk about here, but obviously we have a lot of connections, but we make sure, and I'm going to make sure that you have this uh, highlighted later, make sure that your contact info is visible. So before anything else, make sure you put your contact info there and that it's clickable so we can see you. Make sure you write a headline that rocks. This is where I go differently from Tom again, but can we tell that we're enthusiastic to meet Tom? Raise your hands. Come on. You guys have the little signal there. I can see some hand raising. Yeah. So he's very enthusiastic and you realize he's going to be a great conversationalist. And so you know exactly what he's there for. And he also includes what he's talking about. So he likes to talk about should you follow him? And by the way, I would suggest following him because he's a great example of how to use LinkedIn as a non-techie as well, because he's about business leaderships, networking, and you know, really leveraging relationships. When I when I talk about it, I want to tell people what I do. And so as a service provider, I like talking about demand generation, search engine optimization, and different marketing ops. So of course I'm gonna share about marketing, but I want people to feel like I'm a leader in my field. So I'll share a little bit about leadership. Anyone who follows me realizes my personal growth journey and story. So I do share about personal growth because we've all made mistakes in the past because we're human, but as long as you grow and you show growth along the way, people are actually very open and helping you along the way. And so that's really where it comes into talking about the mindset and the marketing strategy, because if you're not confident, it's going to be hard to show confidence to your, um, in your interviews. So you want to display some form of confidence. And this is why I say be very warm and welcoming. So I emphasize, you know, making sure that you're reinforcing your network there. So I will share things like, for instance, one of my shares today, if you go visit me, I was uh, sharing Phyllis Snodgrass, who just left Habitat for Humanity, but posted a really great read on leadership. And so I'm going to make sure that I share her post and say, really great hashtag lead on leadership from a well-known leader. You don't have to necessarily be the creator of all the content, but sometimes you can facilitate or also, I should say, curate the content, but make sure you do it in a way that's always welcoming because put your best foot forward and don't be fake welcoming because we all know that Southern girl saying, ah, isn't that nice? Mm -mm. That's not authentic. So get rid of the 
isn't that nice and actually be nice. You know, this is a living document. Oh, here's, there's four things in the chat. I'm gonna just open up the chat really quickly. Oh yeah. Okay, thank you for sharing the link to uh, Tom Singer. He, you should all follow him and request to connect with him. So he usually accepts requests if you meet him for coffee. So you can say that you'll buy him a cup of coffee and say that I recommended you connect with him um, for coffee. But yeah, he basically always in his experiences talks about what it is. He always makes sure that, you know, it's not just about your job duties, but highlighting. And in it, you can also have multimedia clips. Oh, uh, to follow someone means that you're not actually connecting with them, but you will see all their updates. So I can follow, um, you know, uh, let's name Deepak Chopra. So I've never met Deepak Chopra, probably, well, we can never say never and that I'm never going to meet him, but I haven't met him yet where I feel like I can, and, I not, and I'm not affiliated with anything that he's doing, but I really enjoy his articles. So when I choose to follow rather than actually become a first degree connection, I'm allowing LinkedIn to send me his updates. So all his activities on LinkedIn, and therefore I can look at his articles and I can also say, oh, well, Deepak Chopra said something very interesting and meaningful that resonates with a value that I'm trying to highlight, perhaps on personal growth or leadership. So, okay, I can go ahead and say very insightful point of view. This, this line from the Deepak Chopra article actually resonated with me. And there's a lot of other ones besides Deepak Chopra, but that was just the first one that came to my head. So closing the chat. This is Tom's summary. And, you know, it was very interesting that he shares you know, how is he, you read this article and you go, he's very relatable. But one of the things that I want to highlight in there is like his first job working as a busboy in Monrovia, California. Yeah, this is where he talks about being a waiter. How many CEOs write about their first job? And then talking about their high spirited adult daughters. So you realize he's a person and you realize what he's done, but he does it in a way where it really stands out and you're realizing he's, he's of service. He cares about the employees. He wants to make real connections because it's in your relationships. That's what actually matters. In fact, there's a great book that I like that I always refer people to, and it's called Referrals for Life. And inside the referrals for life, you actually break down your relationships into your A, B, C's, and D's. Your A's, no matter what is going on in your life, whether you're up or you're down, they always have your back. B's are kind of loose connections where they can facilitate and make an introduction to someone. So for instance, actually part of my role, which is unusual for the startup because this is not something that I normally do, in fact, I'm probably the most introverted of all extroverts, I would say. I'm really an extrovert, but I'm an introverted extrovert. And so reaching out to my connections and facilitating introductions. And so what does that mean? Well, I'm going, I volunteered with Celia Israel about 10 years ago, and she actually took a meeting with the founder and realized this has a dramatic impact for young adults, especially in East Austin, so she's helping by writing an email to certain people so that we can enter the classrooms and talk about the app. How cool is that? But I had to maintain my relationship with Celia, regardless if you voted for her or not. She is very influential in East Austin and knows a lot of teachers. It's a small ask 
to help improve the next generation. So I'm hoping that this was a great example for you to like say why you should make and keep your connections. Another person who I've had the pleasure of actually meeting once or twice, uh, I think we've actually met twice, but we follow each other all online and we like each other's things because we've now created that connection. But before I actually met him, I was following Chris Brogan. And anybody who knows Chris Brogan, he's an over the top, um, one of the earliest bloggers and now the chief of staff at AppFire. So, and guess what, guys? He's a chief of staff of a very well-known tech company that owns um, Trello. So for all of you techies who use Trello, AppFire is the holding company. But guess what? He doesn't have a college degree. He pulled himself up. And so in his LinkedIn, he will talk about different things. But in there, you'll see that he highlights different uh, multimedia. And so... He has a link here of his um, StreamYard show, which is a YouTube, um, basically a podcast, a video podcast where he interviews different people and it streams to the variety of platforms. So here's his multimedia, which is the backpack show. He has a daily article that goes out mostly daily, but I would say at least three times a week where he show, he shares his insights based on what's going on in his life. And he has a newsletter. Honestly, I actually recommend this because it's usually very well and insightful. Always, always, always get recommendations. So I worked at Rocket Dollar and it shows I finished this marketing engagement and it shows us how to do a day to day. So people will see that and realize, oh, even though if you go to my website, it's actually still dated and I'm. I'm transferring out of WordPress into Wix. I'm rebuilding my whole website because prior to the pandemic, I was actually a bigger agency where I had a lot of offshore resources. And then slowly before the pandemic actually hit, I was re shifting over to be more of a, a freelancer marketing consultant because I realized um, I didn't want to work with the Philippines in the sense that I just don't like doing that cross time zone. It wasn't that, but you talk about it and you go, oh, when you do a project, whether it's a 1099 or a W-2, having people share what they thought and actually share it publicly matters. Visualizing. Ah, thank you. And the thing is you can manage your endorsements. They have you have a, a skill quiz, but you know people will endorse it. And actually, to tell you the truth, even if you have seven thousand connections, it really doesn't matter if you had over, you know, a hundred and one because it'll just say ninety nine plus. There are a lot of people who are actually better than me in marketing, but they don't get hired because they didn't play the game. And all this is is a game. So you can actually list your. Um, what you want to be known for, please say something other than spreadsheets. If you're an accountant, I want to know you're good at cost accounting or financial planning or something, you know, related to, but not just spreadsheets. We want to know that you're actually with a skill level. So that way you can command a better salary. Not only that, but you, you have a more in-depth and robust profile. Because there's not as many, I would say, marketers that can say they talk about all of these things and know how to put them together as a system. Hence, that's why I include Growth Hacker, mostly because hacker is, an, is a way of opening a conversation. Because at the end of the day, people want to go, wow, that's impressive. Hmm. She's a little bit out of the box, but she has a lot of recommendations and references. Hmm. Maybe I should meet her for coffee, interview her, even though she's not my top choice to see how she can actually help us because she's obviously a big thinker and an outside of the box thinker. Okay, tell us how you would approach or solve this problem and then you can give them examples. The more you use LinkedIn, right now I'm putting, I'm spending more time writing my articles on medium.com. Um, mostly because I'm also starting to create a leadership 
and personal development story, and I want to try out the uh, that kind of material on Medium. But I definitely recommend people and commenting on other postings as well as sharing their postings will make you higher in search. Because one of the things is they see if you shared their post, but they also want to see who else does it because sometimes that's a second degree connection of their what they're sharing. So I may not be connected to the person that Phyllis actually put. In fact, let me just go ahead and um, exit this and rather than just talk through it, I'll actually just show you. Okay, that's Tom Singers, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Need to move this so I can get to this. So, activity, show all activity. So here I am, Chris Brogan and all of his people, including all these other people here, saw that I liked the post. These are all second degree connections. Oh, here's a senior marketing and communication strategist in the music and gaming technology. Hmm, maybe I should reach out to her and see how long she's been uh, watching Chris and Carrie. Okay. Oh, I'm thinking about writing a book and he's a nonfiction book strategist. That might actually be interesting because she can help me get my self-published book out the, into the world. It gives me an excuse. So here I am sharing Phyllis Snodgrass. And this is actually a really great, and you can see it's already made 42 impressions in the three hours. But it also she also knows there. But you're going, oh, this is insightful. Colin Pope, he's a really great person. There's someone else who's reposted this as well. Let's see who's the reposter. Okay, not visible. I don't know this person at all, but he'll see that I like this. And this is a person I connected with and she'll see that I re-liked it and reposted this. Okay, so I think you guys are starting to see the way it works. So obviously when you're updating your status updates, you unless it's a really important thing, like they're having a whole series at South by Southwest about food, and I am actually about food as medicine, I'm not going to talk about that ham and cheese sandwich. I'm going to talk about and share the importance of supply chain on food I'm giving as an example. And did you realize that a basic American meal comes from at least five different locations so that it's assembled at my, this plate, especially given the consideration that this plate used potato flour and those potatoes had to go from one place or from one state to the next state to come to Texas as flour so that it can turn into bread where the cheese came in from this and blah, blah, blah. You can see that makes it a way more interesting ham and cheese sandwich. Um, join the LinkedIn group. I will make sure that I'm active in the LinkedIn group and get the alerts. And I also go, whenever I do have comments in there, I do flag people's names. It's a great way to make sure you're actually getting into their inbox. So for instance, if you know you want to work in a company and you know there's three or four people that you can connect with regularly on LinkedIn that work at that company, you can start to build a very, I would say, weak tie into the company by interacting with these people and making yourself more likable. And more importantly, most of these companies have some sort of employer incentive program where our employee, you know, employees can refer their friends and they might get a 500 to $2,000 if it's a successful hire. So after a while going, yeah, you know, you're pretty cool. Go ahead. 
Uh, somebody else asking a question? No. Okay. There was a question posed in the chat uh, that says, is there a certain number of minimum uh, who has looked at your LinkedIn profile folks that you want weekly? So you, you get that, that piece of data. Um, and is there a certain number that you should try to go for? I've never heard of such a thing. Um, no, I wouldn't, because I, to me, that's like almost saying like the successful outcome of this project is the number of opens of an app. And I'm like going, who cares if they opened it? I want to make sure that you're actually using it. You know, so when it's, to me, it's like, okay, they looked at the profile, but did they contact you? Did you have an, a chance to meet up and have a virtual coffee? Did you have a connection? What is the next thing that you can do? It's They looked at your profile, so what? Were you able to do the next step with them and create a relationship with a stranger? Digital networking. Did that make sense? Yeah, I have heard of people who uh, I think maybe they have the uh, they, the subscription, they they pay for for LinkedIn. But when they see that somebody has looked at their at their profile, they'll follow up and they'll say, hey, I saw you look. Exactly. Uh, you know, I'm very interested in the company that you work for and, and what let's connect and, and have a conversation. So they follow up in that way. Um, yeah. That is the more meaningful way of looking at that number, because if you wanted to work at AppFire, I want to interact with a bunch of people that work at AppFire. And so that they know me and so they refer me in. Gotcha. Yeah. And I actually, during the pandemic, I did apply for AppFire, but I didn't get the gig, but that's okay because I got other gigs. So, and I'm still friends and we we're still peer networking in the marketing industry. So it's not a, even if it's not a successful job interview, it's a successful network. And that way they still, because there's always going to be an opening later. So for instance, maybe five years from now, I'm tired of being a consultant and I'm going, yeah, AppFire has that perfect creative position for a marketing strategist. Okay, let me try again. So. It's never the, necessarily the most immediate thing, but you're building relationships for life. Okay. Anything else? Was I clear? Yes, it was very clear. And thank you for that. Okay. The other reason why I recommend following Tom Singer. Some of my posts are just boring. They're just article shares. He takes the time to go on canva.com and, and make sure that he goes, takes the time to go on canva.com and actually put a picture with every header. So if we go right now and see his latest posts, we'll go to Tom Singer. He should be really happy that I'm sharing so much of him. <laughs> So you can see, this is a picture that was created in Canva. Okay, he went to a networking event. I think it was the ATC networking event actually, Canva. They're always very, okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, these are all the people. So let me go up to the top of his uh, feed here and we'll just go to posts. He is making sure he's using this feed and that it's always warm, welcoming and inviting. And there's something insightful. It's not just a selfie, but if you're trying to gain a competitive edge, attending trade conferences, Canva, something authentic. He made this in Canva. That's how he added this text in here. But you can see he's also leveraging multimedia.
the, okay. That's what we mean by amazing posts. You should be happy. I mean, it was mentioned in the comments earlier, you should be joining relevant LinkedIn groups. There's a certain number of groups that are allowed. I can't remember if it was 50 or 100 off the top of my head. However, um, make sure that I go in and out of the groups all the time, depending on what are my consultants, uh, as a consultant, what are the clients I'm working with? Sometimes I'm in economics, sometimes I'm in AI groups, but I'm definitely going to be sharing things that are relevant in that group as well as maybe um, posting things, reposting things from other members of that group where I would find things in that group that are willing and easy to share. Okay, 50. Oh yeah, and you don't have to use Canva at all um, to, you can definitely share, uh, share photos from anywhere that are open source that make sure you have the rights to share it. So I just like using Canva because it's a, they do have a free, free version and it's just to put text in there on top of a picture, but you can also do that in PowerPoint. Go ahead. Is someone about to ask a question? Not that I know of. Okay. So coming back around, contact info, make sure it's clickable. If you have websites, make sure you have your email there. <laughs> you want to be found to find your next job and be contacted by a recruiter, make it easy. Obviously we're playing a game here. Tom Singer has a different game than I do on marketing. So I will put a bunch of marketing talk you know, what are keywords and marketing in there? However, if depending on what your industry is, is you're gonna use different keywords. So I keep looking at the chat window. And you can use Canva or Photoshop to spruce it up, by the way. So when you're using the keywords, it's like, okay, People are always talking about this, that, or the other. So I can look at the top hundred words in marketing and find ways to sprinkle dust between my bio headline and all of the articles that I'm sharing to make sure that there's, you know, I'm sharing the relevant information. You know, everybody's talking about chat GPT. What people are not talking about is the fact that Google has already created readers um, and little bots to see if those were if that text was generated by ChatGPT, that was worth sharing. <laughs> but I made sure to use the word ChatGPT in what I shared. Could you describe that again? Uh, sure. Do you credit if you if you list things uh, that yeah, you got? Yeah, because I'm, I'm always sharing articles from other people. I'm I'm hardly ever creating my own article right now. Oh, it's an article share, and if you got if you got an article that was generated by ChatGPT, okay. then you then you discredit that? Yeah, so this article was talking about all of the um, the new bots that are created by Google to verify that the text written on your website or your blog or whatever you're sharing was generated by ChatGPT. It knows. So if you're writing that article, it this is what the article was talking about. And so I thought it was more important for me as a marketing person to explain why copywriting is still important and why you should hire a human writer because Google search engine knows. And if you're trying to rank on search, you shouldn't be depending on all your copy from ChatGPT. And I thought that was a more interesting article to share than all this other crap that's about ChatGPT because they're just pumping it up. And I'm like going, no, no, no. Um, what What is news? A dog that bit a man or a man that bites a dog? And so I want to be known as a person that shares the man that bites the dog because that's always a little twist that stands out in people's brain. Therefore, people are looking at me as a source of information because they know that I'm actively curating relevant industry or professional or leadership content that's worth reading. 
So you don't have to be the writer that writes all of this. You don't have to be spending hours and hours writing articles. You just have to show up smart because you're gaming. This is a video game to be seen. Essentially, instead of playing Dungeons and Dragons or whatever it is, the big, the big game that everybody's playing now, you're playing the LinkedIn game. And you guys can play the LinkedIn game. And it makes it very super easy. Yeah, I think so too. If a recruiter doesn't share their contact info so they can be reached, they are missing out on good candidates. I agree. So, you know, and you're kind of going, what are some good, you know, keywords? So, um, Randy, I'm just curious, what is your industry that you're going in? I'm just picking on you because I see you're on, on the camera. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was in uh, semiconductors. I'm looking for something different now. Something in the purchasing field, probably. Okay, so purchasing. So we'll just use this as a um, article. So let's see. Do, 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 do. So for instance, we're going to go here. I got to move this control panel thing question again. It's in my way. So let's see what purchasing, purchasing is a keyword, purchasing manager, purchasing power, purchase manager. Let's just look at purchasing. There's 22,000 people that are on this, in this a keyword right now. I would hit the follow if I'm interested in this. So I'll follow that keyword, whatever. Okay, so purchasing. Okay, here's a recruitment officer at a film company. At least she says recruiter. It's always worth for me to follow all the recruiters. Even if, I'm, if it's not relevant to me, it's going to be relevant to MA, you know, but she's not hiring a writer, but she is a recruiter here. Okay, look, here is this recruiter following a purchasing officer. Sometimes people are sharing memes. You will be remembered if you shared this meme. I'm sorry. <laughs> it shows definite personality. <laughs> so I'll just go funny. But I don't know anything. And so it's like, okay. And then I'm interesting here is like, oh, supply chain manager their degree, I could follow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's a need for a director of director of purchasing and procurement. See more. Okay. Let's open a new tab called procurement jobs. That might be more relevant to you as a keyword, but you can go in here and I would hit like, and I would hit follow. You can even put a comment in there. Let's see, did he put a link? And even though I'm not looking for this, we'll share with a friend who is looking for a new job. Post, <laughs> I show up in this person's feed. And then maybe I can send this to, well, I'm not connected to you, but I can send it to Shannon. Yeah, there you are. I'm following you. Well, yeah, but we're not connected where I would send you a message yet. So I'm sending it to Shannon, who's now thinking about you, who can forward it to you.
So as annoying as some of the Twitter hashtags, because I originally got onto Twitter, I just have to share the story and back in 2009 to follow all the free food around South by Southwest. That's how I learned about hashtags, hashtags, free food. (laughs) (laughs) I believe it used to be that you could, that you could send it to, um, to a group and and now it just asks for individuals. Now it could be you can repost it to a group. I could repost it to a group, probably. So let's see. Let me see if it gives me a repost. With yeah. The... Let's see. Okay. I have to keep moving the little control power bar. Oh, under, and then you click on anyone, and I think. Yeah. Posting is here. Uh, now go back. go back, and go back. And now click on anyone and see if a group, yeah, there that's, you can repost it to a group, but you can't send it to a group, which is kind of weird, but at any rate. Yeah. So I could send it to I know <clears throat> the other group because I also know Craig Foster and I'm sure there's people. So I'll hit back. So I'll let Shannon post this to the group. So. But yeah, does that make a little bit more sense for you, Randy, how to play with the keywords? And thank you for letting me be you being an example for this slide. Oh, thank you. So looking at the chat. Yes, please use the hashtag Launchpad Job Club when possible. Okay. Please, when you send me a connection request to connect, and I encourage all of you guys to connect with me, even though we haven't met for coffee, you all attended my class. You never know where I can help you or we can, I can, um, or I, I can ask for your help in 10 years because it's a long tail game is how I look at LinkedIn. This is the King's quest that never ends. Mm-hmm.